So, you're a whiskey enthusiast, or maybe you're not, but you've seen cask investments bandied around social and mainstream media. You've seen proof of massive returns in a market that seemingly has no risks, and you want a slice of the pie. Well, hold on, not all is as it seems. That's right, in this video, I'm going to share my experiences in the cask whiskey market over the past seven years with you. So as you can understand the risks and pitfalls associated with whiskey casks and ultimately make an informed decision that's right for you. Now, I started working in whiskey as a cask broker or trader and the job was simple. You sell a cask to a client, the client holds on to the cask as the whiskey ages, everyone knows older whiskey is worth more money and then eventually we buy the casks back from the client at an increased value, bottle and sell the whiskey at a profit, everyone's a winner. This made total sense to me, and I watched as past customers were paid out on their investments and market values of casks slowly started to rise. I decided to invest my own money and bought several casks through this business, supposedly at the same price that my employer had paid. All was well, or so I thought. The one issue I had with this business was there was no functional exit strategy. We were preaching buying all these casks back for bottling under our own brand, but no brand actually existed. I pitched the idea of reviving a legacy brand belonging to my director and was quickly given the green light. I went from selling casks to arranging bottling projects and designing a whole new product. Now, fast forward, December the 23rd, 2017. I met with HMRC to get an alcohol wholesale license for this business. And this is where things started to go downhill. During this meeting, it became apparent that my directors had been operating in the industry for six years without a Wauga license. They claimed to have over 600 casks under management for clientele, when in fact, the 600 plus casks were held in my director's private names. The meeting was paused and we were told we had the right to a lawyer it was clear we were in a lot of trouble. I spent the festive period reading through every excise notice HMRC has published, and it quickly became apparent to me that my directors have been operating completely illegally. I handed in my resignation and set up the Whiskey Baron at the start of 2018. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jake, this sounds awful. You must have worked for a terrible company, but it's great to hear that HMRC discovered this and closed them down. Well, unfortunately, this is not what happened at all. This company shut its doors when I left, yes. My directors cut ties with each other. However, they went on to set up a further three companies in the whiskey cask space later that year. All three of these companies are still operational, despite the fact that they started off trading illegally. So what is it that I do in the whiskey space? Well, essentially, I do exactly what my old employers claim to do. I buy casks that I want to bottle in the future, and I work with private clientele in order to lay down this stock without tying up company capital in the process. To date, the Whiskey Baron has bottled 16 whiskies under our own brand, as well as countless expressions under private labels for our clientele that are whiskey fanatics. And I love what I do. However, there are a lot of risks within whiskey. For example, pricing. Whiskey casks are an over-the-counter trade, and there are no receipts as such. This means once you've bought something, it's yours, and there is no recourse if the cask isn't as described. Now, I learned this the hard way. When I finally set up the Whiskey Baron, I had the casks purchased through my, the old company transferred over along with all of my client stock into our new company, Wauga. When this happened, I realized that I had in fact been lied to regarding pricing and had paid somewhere in the region of two to three times the true value of this whiskey. I realized paperwork had been falsified and money had essentially been taken right out of my pocket. Another risk to consider is buying OLA versus RLA. Whiskey casks are living, breathing things, and they're sold either on an original liters of alcohol basis or a regauge liters of alcohol basis. Now, unfortunately, there is no centralized system that holds all of this information. So companies can lie about these stats in order to maximize their sale. I've personally bought casks since setting up the Whiskey Baron with a fresh regauge only to find that half the liquid is missing or the ABV is significantly lower than stated. And again, there is little to no recourse in these instances. 
Something else to consider are the warehouses. Now, HMRC have announced that as of 2023, they are scrapping the Wauga license so as anyone can buy, sell, and hold whiskey casks in bond. The only companies required to have a license moving forward will be the bonded warehouses themselves. This is terrible news for whiskey casks, as we already have a market that resembles the Wild West. However, as of next year, 2023, it will be truly unregulated on all fronts. And you might think, well, Jake, if the warehouses are still required to have licensing, all is well, and those investing in casks will be secure moving forward. Wrong. We've had freshly regaged casks arrived in a new warehouse, and all of a sudden, 30 litres of pure alcohol, that's approximately 60 bulk litres of liquid, is missing. We've had casks damaged by warehouses who claim it arrived like that, despite us having pictures to the contrary. We've even had a warehouse try and sell us an old and rare cask of Little Mill worth six figures. We were offered a sample on camera and uploaded this video to our social channels only to discover that the cask didn't belong to the warehouse at all and they didn't even have permission to give us the sample. Now, how would you feel if your old and rare cask was being sampled without your permission? Or if over 60 litres, approximately 85 bottles of cask strength whiskey, just disappeared overnight without any explanation. Unfortunately, these sorts of things are happening in the whiskey space all the time. And unless you know what you're doing, it can be an incredibly dangerous market to invest in. For example, in the past six months alone, the Whiskey Baron has taken over the management of seven privately held cask portfolios. All of these casks were purchased through different companies, and the clients opted to work with the Whiskey Baron for a myriad of different reasons, including the inability to get accurate cask information. Information on where your cask is stored and your unique identifier number, your cask number. This is basic information you should have access to from the moment of purchase. Knowledge that their cask had been sold multiple times to other investors. I've recently taken on board a client whose cask has been sold to at least three other people. And finally, just the sheer inability to get simple responses from the company that they bought their casks through. So, the whiskey cask market might not be all that it's cracked up to be at the moment. And it's definitely worth doing your own due diligence before making any purchases. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful along your whiskey journey. Hit the follow or subscribe button below to keep up to date with our content and look out for our next cask investment video, which has seven reasons as to why you shouldn't buy casks, as well as three reasons as to why maybe a cask investment is exactly the right thing for you. Slancher.